I'm Jeff Chandler for the Events Calendar. One of the most popular features of Events Calendar Pro is the ability to create recurring events. For example, a cooking class that happens every week on Wednesday for 10 weeks, summer camp every day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. for a week, a board meeting that is always on the second Friday of the month, holiday celebration that occurs on the same day every year, or school exams that repeat multiple times but without a particular pattern. All of these scenarios are possible with recurring events. However, note that you can only add one recurrence pattern per event. For more complex patterns, you can group together multiple recurrent events in a series. You can always add any number of single date-based recurrences. This video will show you how to use this functionality in detail. While you can create recurring events in both the block editor and the classic editor, we'll be using the block editor in this video. Let's begin with the time and date settings for your event. If you're converting an existing single event into a recurring event, you have already set the start and end for the single event. If you're creating a recurring event from scratch, the first options set the start and end for the first occurrence. The first occurrence will also dictate what kinds of pattern options are available. As you can see here, we're using the block editor and I've already created an event, the Pickle Fest. And we're going to click on this button down here. It says repeat this event. And this is where we can get into some of the uh, pattern options that are available. For recurring events that conform to a regular pattern, select the option that applies to your recurring event from the dropdown. You'll see happens and then in the dropdown we have once, daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly. If your event occurs on specific dates without following an established pattern, select the once option for your event. We'll go over the options for both pattern and non-pattern occurrences later in the video. Please note that creating tickets for recurrent events is not currently supported at this time. When you pick an option from the happens dropdown, more fields will appear. You can use those additional options to set the exact pattern you need for your event. For example, an event that recurs every three days, or a weekly event that recurs every week on Tuesdays and Thursdays, or a monthly event that always follows on the first Friday of the month. The ends option allows you to dictate when a given recurrence pattern will stop repeating. The default option is never, which means that your event will repeat for up to 60 months in the future, AKA five years. Setting the end option to end on a given date lets you specify the last possible date an event from the sequence can take place. For example, you create an event starting Wednesday, October 4th. It recurs every week, ending on Wednesday, October 25th. That final date is when the last event in the sequence will take place. Not to be confused with the end date of the event itself. If you select a Tuesday, October 24th, then the last instance of the event would take place on the preceding Wednesday, October 18th, instead. You can also set the pattern to end after a specific number of occurrences. For example, an event that happens every month and ends after 12 events will recur each month after a year. In other words, the on and after options let you distinguish between inclusive and exclusive date ranges. Selecting the never option means that events will be created up to 60 months, five years at the in, after the initial event's date. Remember that you can only add one pattern-based rule per event. If you have a more complex event, you can use the series feature to group several recurring events together. You can also add as many individual occurrences to a recurring event using the once option. You can remove a set of recurrence rules at any time by clicking the trash icon on the right. As you can see here, click the trash icon, that gets rid of the pattern occurrences. If your recurring event includes one or more event instances that do not occur as part of a greater pattern, you can add these events to your recurring event by using the once recurrence type. You can add as many of these manual recurrences to your event as you want. Enter the date for your event into the on field, which is right here, by typing or using the provided date picker. You can also exclude days or dates within a recurring event by using an exception. As you see down below, you can click the add exception and here's a list of options you can do through the drop down menu here and you can select the date with the date picker here. And for example, if you have an event that happens weekly on Fridays, you could choose to exclude the third Friday of every month. 
the recurring event would not appear on your calendar every third Friday. The Add Exception option will appear as soon as you add any other recurrence rules. You can exclude occurrences based on a pattern or choose individual dates. And as you can see here, we can add more than one exception if you would like to do that. The Add Exception option will appear as soon as you add any other recurrence rules. You can exclude occurrences based on a pattern or choose individual dates. You can only have one pattern-based exception per event, but you can add as many single once exceptions as you'd like. You can delete exceptions by clicking the trash icon to the right. As you can see here, click that and it, they disappear. Once you have set a recurrence pattern and or added individual occurrences with the once option, you can save the event. When you save, the recurring event occurrences will be created. If your event was not already in a series, a new series will also be generated as part of the recurring event save process. So I've already saved this post, so I'm going to click update. Then we're going to go back to the WordPress admin dashboard. We're going to go to event series. And as you can see, a series has been created on that event. And we have 55 different events. And what's nice on this screen is you can convert any of these recurring events back to a single event. If you have many such recurring events, you will quickly end up with a very busy calendar. Now this could be particularly confusing to users accessing your events in list style views. For example, if you only want 20 events to show per page, you don't want each page to be many events that are identical except for the difference in the start date. To avoid this situation, you can condense events in list style views for all but the first upcoming event in series. You'll be able to find this setting under events, events, settings, underneath the general tab. And if we scroll down, you'll see this option, condense events in series, which will show only the next event in each series. And again, only affects the list style views. Also, when you check mark this box, you'll see this option, enable the month view cache. We recommend that you leave this check marks as it will improve the performance of the calendar on sites that have many events. If you have events that recur with multiple patterns, for example, monthly on the first Tuesday and the third Wednesday, then you can use a series. With event series, you can group and manage multiple events. A series can include any number of single or recurring events. When you create a recurring event and don't assign it to a series, a new series of the same name will be created when you first publish the event. That's exactly what happened in the previous section of this video. If you want to create an event with a different recurrence pattern in the same series, you can do that by duplicating the recurring event and then adjusting the recurrence rules. Both events will be in the same series, so they'll be displayed together on the series landing page. For more information on series, see the video description below for a link to a knowledge base article that explains how series works. We have aimed to make recurring events as intuitive and experienced as possible. We hope that this video will serve as a useful reference for the options available to you. If you should get stuck or need any further help, please don't hesitate to post to our help desk and let us know. Good luck.